Hello and welcome to session 38 on our course on quality control and improvement with Minitab. I am Professor Indrajit Mukherjee from Shailesh Jameta School of Management IIT Bombay. Uh, so, last session we are discussing about blocking and then we talked about center points like that. We will continue with uh, center points and then move forward with some other topics which is relevant. Okay. Uh, so, let me just go through uh, what we have uh, discussed on center points. So, uh, in this case what we are trying to say is that uh, we we are having uh, we are doing experimentation on this corner points over here and uh, when we are near to optimal scenarios what happens is that uh, there may be curvature in the models there can be curvature in the models uh, if we are maximizing the models so there will be so uh, maybe uh, we started with some uh, some region of experimentation and now we are in this region and where curvature is present over here. So, uh, first order model may not work, first order model may not work which is not suitable uh, model at this phase uh, for prediction, maybe second order model is more appropriate where we will have x i square terms that, that needs to be incorporated in the model, in the regression models like that. Okay. Uh, this is up to interactions, these are main effects and these are the interaction effects and this is the quadratic effects that we want to incorporate over here. And so, factorial design uh, is uh, uh, not sufficient uh, for modeling this one. So, for specific designs has to be used for that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, to make sure that we are near to the region of curvature, we are near to the region of curvature where in the response surface that we are generating. Uh, in this case, what we do is that we we, uh, we add a corner points over here, we add corner points in the design uh, ex in experimentation. So, in that case what happens is that uh, generally this uh, zero point is the uh, uh, this this you can consider as the uh, as is condition that means current 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 scenario is the zero condition like that that setting is the current uh, zero conditions like that for a variable factor a and factor b so zero level is decided uh, initially and then you will have a plus level on one side and minus level on one side for factor a and b like that okay so, uh, these are the corner points plus 1 and minus 1 like that and 0 is the center point which is the uh, which is the uh, current operating condition you can think of and at this current operating condition what what is taken is that 3 or uh, 5 runs or uh, trial runs are made over here 3 to 5. This is the suggested number of center points that we uh, replication that we do in the center point setting that is 0 0 setting basically so in 0 0 setting uh, what we are doing is that we are running the experimental trial and 3 to 5 trials are uh, optimal generally found to be quite suitable and uh, and then uh, what is expected is that the uh, this uh, uh, extreme points that is that is the factorial points over here what we are having this corner points corner points the average of the corner points and average of the center points are compared basically the average are compared and based on that what happens is that uh, we we try to estimate what is the average value at the at the center points and what is the average in the corner points like that and that difference is taken over here and statistically compared whether it is significant or not and minitab will give you significance of this ss value of pure quadratic uh, terms uh, in in the form of curvature that will be mentioned over here that means you are experimenting in this zone and there is a center point you have taken and the corner points you have completed the design. So, at center points what you see over here is that at 0 points I have run the trial and there are 4 replications done over here. So, 4 replicates are done over here and this is the basic uh, uh, 2 square design that we are having. So, 4 trials uh, are done with uh, 3 replicates like that. So, uh, 4 into 3 12 experimentation and then we have uh, another 4 experimentation, 16 experimentation completes uh, the center point design basically. Okay. So, when uh, when we do that in that case uh, we can we can see what is the uh, whether the curvature is significant or not. If the curvature is significant that means uh, we need to consider uh, second order models in that case. Okay. Quadratic terms have to be incorporated uh, and that has to be uh, that has to be done by using some other uh, some other design. Uh, uh, that is suggested to to determine the curvature, determine the uh, quadratic equation basically. Okay, so uh, so what we will do is that we will try to set the points are added in Minitab and the design is completed like that. So we will go to a Minitab uh, file like that. So in this case, so what we will do is that stat go to design of experiments, factorial design, create factorial design. Maybe uh, two factors at two levels we can think of. So number of factor is two that we have selected, and then uh, we go to design full factorial number of center points over here. Maybe four center points we have added. Uh, let us say uh, at a uh, center point we want to replicate it four times like that, uh, and uh, no blocking. So uh, block will be one over here. So in this case we are not number of replicates, and maybe we can assume that uh, we have only one points. Uh, at the, we are not replicating that one. So two square four. 
uh, observation. So, sorry, uh, number of replicates three times we have replicated maybe. So, three replicates what we have seen. Uh, so, this is three replicates over here and this uh, completes the work and uh, when we click OK, then we can name factor A and B. So, uh, this is numeric, we are assuming numeric over here. So, this will be OK and lower and upper upper uh, is minus 1 plus 1. We do not randomize this one, we, we do not fold also over here. So, if this is by default we will keep and then we will click OK and you will get the design and design summary is given over here and uh, you will find that total 16 trials what I told is that. So, uh, 4 corner points and uh, 2 square design replicated 3 times like that. So, this is same as what we are seeing over here. So, A B is the factor and we have uh, 3 replicates and corner points are 4 four points are replicated over here. Uh, now, when we have done this and we run the experimental trial with this, you get the results that is given over here like 28, 25. These are the outcomes of CDQ which is uh, over here yield that is considered over here and factor E is concentration of the reaction and amount of catalyst is a factor B. Uh, now, we can analyze the data. Now, we can analyze the data and data is already saved uh, somewhere in Minitab. So, in this case, we will, we will just see that file where it is saved and we will use that file. So, uh, this is uh, uh, with center point. So, this is the data set that we are having. Uh, so, typical observation what you see is that at the center points the values are quite high. You see the average will be always high as compared to the average at other points like that at the at the corner points like that. So, this uh, indicates that these values are significantly different from this, but Minitab will confirm whether, whether uh, curvature is present or not. So, in this case, uh, but seeing the data it seems it should be. So, uh, what we will do is that uh, with center points. So, this is the design and we have incorporated the yield data over here and this is the data set that we are having. Then what we will do is that we can go to stat and go to design of experiments and then go to factorial design, analyze factorial design and in this case we have to mention that yield is the response that we are looking for. In terms uh, A B and A B interactions we have and include corner point this has to be included over here include uh, sorry center points in the model. So, we will include this one. So, that S S uh, pure quadratic can be calculated like that. So, in graph also you can see Pareto plots like that that we have discussed earlier also and then you will get the analysis over here and about R square value is R square adjusted is 98 seems to be uh, quite good model, but we what we see is that curvature is present over here. So, if, we, if, we, if I paste this uh, paste uh, this one, I copy this one and paste it in Excel. So, we can see that one what is happening and uh, just enlarge the image uh, what we are getting over here. So, that uh, we can understand that what is the p value significance or not like that. So, uh, we can we can see that. So, uh, we will just open an Excel file and then we will paste this one. So, I have opened this one, I will control P over here. So, if I enlarge this one, what you observe is that you see for curvature, this is SS, SS uh, pure quadratic term and this is significant over here. A is significant, B is significant, but AB interaction is not significant what we are seeing over here, but curvature is significant. Curvature is significant, that means this uh, model tells that uh, there is a curvature in the model which needs to be considered and uh, while, while we are developing the regression equation. So, in that case, uh, some other way we have to find out the quadratic equation. Now, this uh, experimentation is not enough to calculate the beta 0 estimate, beta estimation of uh, the regression equation if we incorporate the square terms like that. So, this design is not sufficient over here. Now, what you can do is that uh, what we can do is that we can we can just see that uh, when we are doing this uh, when we are doing this experimentation. Uh, we can we can just have a plot and see what is happening. So, I can go to graph and show you what is happening. So, in this case uh, 3D surface plot and when I uh, use where plots over here and, and I use that uh, z axis is the yield and a and b are the factors over here and surface options we can give as uh, uh, mesh over here 20, 20 like that. We can click this one and when you click ok what will happen is that you will see that uh, this is the this is the curvature is visible over here. So, you can see this one and uh, curvature is quite visible and you can just rotate the axis over here and see what is happening. So, here you see that there is a huge amount of curvature that is observed in the model. So, if uh, this 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 indicates that uh, we need to add quadratic terms in the model. So, uh, so we can we can also see that uh, without center points uh, what will be the diagram. So, I have just uh, removed the center points over here and this is the design that we have uh, we have in hand. I wanted to show you that uh, 
how graphically it will looks if, if we if we have not added the center point. So, in this case 3 D surface plot again we can use where plots over here and these are the same things we have taken over here and I click ok and the surface is not visible in this case. So, what we are seeing is that uh, initial 2 square design it is not showing it is quite flat over here. So, in this case this is not reflected, but whenever I have added a center points over here and center point experimentation was done what has happened is that I have seen that there are that the, the mean is uh, quite significantly higher than the corner points like that. So, that indicates that we need to add a uh, uh, we need to uh, go for quadratic models over here, we need to go for quadratic models over here. So, uh, then how do you go for quadratic models? How do you go for quadratic models? A specific design is available which is which is helpful for developing the uh, uh, quadratic design, uh, quadratic, quadratic equations over here. This is known as central composite design, this is known as central composite design or CCD design like that. So, this is one of the models that I am showing over here, this is known as spherical uh, CCD design over here. There will be corner points over here, there is a factorial points over here, there will be center points over here that is that is shown over here, but there will be something called which is known as axial points over here, this axial points will be added in the design like that. So, I will finish the experimentation with corner points that we have done earlier also. Now, we will add some axial points over here, so that we can estimate the quadratic beta values of the uh, quadratic terms basically. So, in this case what we were going to do is that we will add this axial points over here. So, these are the axial points, 4 axial points we will add in the design and this is known as CCD design. Uh, this is spherical and rotatable what it says is that equal precision of estimation is in all direction when when, when we develop the response surface like this uh, what you are seeing on the right hand side of the screen response surface drawn on any tab. So, in this case what happens is that estimation at any corner of this uh, is quite precise, quite precise. So, that is why we use CCD design and uh, in this case uh, we say that it is a rotatable CCD design, this is a rotatable central composite design and for that uh, then what will be the axial points? This is 0, 0 point over here and these are the corner points minus 1 plus 1 this this points what you are seeing over here, then what will be the value of axial points ok. So, this is known as the distance from the center point, this will be noted by an alpha indicator that this distance from here to the center points is around alpha over here and what should be the alpha that is that is the question over here. So, generally alpha is taken as uh, uh, number of corner points over here. So, uh, there are 4 corner points over here. So, 4th root of uh, corner points like that. So, 4 uh, corner points over here. So, this will be square root of 2 and this will be 1.414 that is uh, uh, alpha value that is selected over here. So, this is the uh, uh, trend that is th this is the formulation that is generally used. So, that it is rotatable CCD design like that. So, alpha is uh, uh, taken as 1.414. So, one exper 4 experimentation has to be completed at this distance from the center point and these are the 4 points if you experiment that one. Uh, and then uh, then you can you can just uh, generate the response surface which is in quadratic term we can generate the response surface like that ok. Uh, and uh, this was done this experiment was completed. So, earlier uh, we have done for the center points let us say and now uh, these points are different what you are seeing is that yield values are different over here. So, this is uh, minus 1 and plus condition are different over here. So, in this case uh, uh, we have reached to uh, about the uh, uh, about the optimal scenarios, global optimal, global optimal uh, uh, setting conditions like that near to that. So, what we are doing is that we are, we have we are incorporating center points over here, we have a uh, minus 1 plus 1 condition like that, we are experimenting in some region and uh, this is the center points over here, then we are adding this axial points which is uh, square root of 1 point uh, square root of 2 that is 1.414. So, this is added over here and then uh, uh, when we add this uh, 1 over here that is 1.414. So, these 4 trials are completed over here and these are the results that we are getting over here and they, then then we can analyze and we can when we do analysis of variance what you will find is that uh, a square term will be incorporated, b square term will be incorporated along with a b interaction and you can also see the lack of it, there is no lack of it, the model seems to be adequate and the regression equation we can get uh, what is the what is the model. So, this is a square terms b square terms and r square is coming out to be quite 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 ok that is 97.05 that is that is quite uh, uh, fine. So, in this case. Uh, so, now uh, how to create the design CCD design so that I can get quadratic terms like that. So, in that case we have to go to mini tab and then I will show you how it is generated like that. So, this is uh, this we have discussed this uh, we have discussed. So, in this case. Uh, we will go to uh, CCD design like that. So, uh, and we can we can just see the last one. So, uh, I will delete this one. 
uh, a blank uh, sheet like that and then I will create a CCD design. So, what I will do is that I will go to stat and then go to DOE. I have to go to response surface over here, we cannot go to factorial design to create this. I have to go to response surface and then create response surface design. Here you will find central composite design. So, in this case I will say central composite design I want to create. Number of continuous factor is uh, basically 2, we are having A and B. Uh, that is the one and in design matrix what we will do is that we will use the full uh, 13 runs with block 1 and center point 5 this is the uh, uh, by default you will take like that and then uh, value of alpha is also default it will be square root of and that this is default alpha is 1.414 that is given over here. So, when you click ok and then factors you can you can write what is the factors. So, this is uh, you do not have to do anything over here and in options uh, you do not randomize the run let us let us uh, create the design. So, if you click ok what will happen this uh, this matrix this uh, is already created. These 13 runs are created over here, uh, 4 corner points and uh, then we have center points, 5 center points over here and then we have axial points that is given over here, 4 axial points that is given over here. Then what you have to do is that CTQ measures if you put over here and then analyze the data, nothing nothing more we can do over here. Uh, so, in this case uh, we are uh, we have already incorporated this data. So, we, we do not want to uh, we do not want to uh, uh, create uh, we do not want to waste our time over here. So, we will go to uh, uh, directly to that and uh, this is the response of specificity design that is there over here. So, this is the data set is completed and placed over here in the yield column over here. Then what you have to do is that to create the uh, to, to analyze this I will go to uh, DOE then go to response surface over here and then go to analyze response surface design over here. I will go to analyze response surface and I will click o yield over here and the terms that we will add is uh, full quadratic terms that we will add over here. We, when we add this one and click ok other things remain same and we can see Pareto plots of this and then what we can do is that we can click ok over here and then what happens is that uh, Pareto plot will show you which is significant which is not. So, in this case what you see is that A square is important, A is important, B, B, is, uh, B square is important, B is important, but A B is not so much significant over here. Interaction between A and B is not significant, but quadratic term is significant over here. So, we, we can retain those terms because we have we have gone to high end uh, second order model over here. So, we can uh, we can keep interaction or we can drop also interaction over here. So, when you, when we do this uh, you will get the ANOVA analysis what is shown over here. So, I will click this and I will paste it in Excel uh, and that will give me the equation uh, idea of the equations what we are using. So, in this case this is the, so what we see is the linear model A is significant, B is also significant according to P value, A square is significant, B square is significant also. Interaction is not significant, but lack of it also does not show anything, uh, anything that shows that there is lack of it. So, model seems to be adequate over here. So, in this case this quadratic equation can be used like that. So, uh, this uh, uh, we can we can we can adopt this uh, CCD design to develop uh, equations uh, where quadratic terms are significant. So, whenever you are near to the global optimal solution generally what happens is that uh, we try to use CCD design and then uh, develop the quadratic equation and then try to optimize the uh, response surface like that. We will try to optimize the response surface and that is the objective of this response surface methodology what, what generally happens is that we start experimentation from certain region over here and then we slowly move towards the optimal global optimal points and then we use CCD design over here and finally reach the optimal global optimal solution or setting conditions like that. That is the overall idea of response surface methodology and uh, it can it uses a specific optimization algorithm. So, to reach from this point to this point like that, but what I am saying is that generally linear model works over here in the initial stages and when we go to this point then the, we need a uh, quadratic equation over here. So, for that the design is CCD design that is generally used uh, and then the optimal solution. So, this is a sequential experimentation that happens in response surface methodology, right? response surface methodology. So, we try to model and optimize, we try to model and optimize. So, that that is a brief overview of response surface methodology, but there are rules how we move from uh, initial condition to the final condition that will be uh, that uh, we can see in any books like that. So, this is uh, what we have in response surface uh, methodology and, uh, uh, and now an important topic which which we, we I thought we should address like that which is known as multiple response optimization which is known as multiple response optimization or a MRO uh, multiple response optimization problems like that. So, this is the general situation what is generally encountered in industries like that uh, when we have uh, multiple number of responses which is important like that for the for the uh, from the customer standpoint basically. So, it is not only yield it may be uh, many other characteristics which are important like that. 
okay uh, so over here like one of the example that is taken over here is that engine cylinder liner board uh, grinding operation is going on in a in, in a in a engine manufacturing unit let, let us say or assembly assembly line it is happening like that and machine machining line basically it is happening and then it goes to assembly line basically so in in the machining what is happening is that there will be uh, this is the cylinder uh, cylinder uh, block that you see over here and there will be cylinder bores over here and uh, we need to uh, we need to machine this one and and then uh, we uh, we need to generate the surface what is required by the customer and generally uh, what characteristics they see or CTQs that they observe over here is basically surface finish whether it is okay or not maybe cross hatch angle is another important characteristics which is observed overlady of the uh, bore that is that that is there that is also observed and taper of the bore can also be one of the characteristics so there are uh, number of characteristics over here is one two uh, 3 and 4 that you are seeing over here. So, there are 4 characteristics simultaneously it should adhere to the specification. Uh, so, that is important over here uh, there is no one single characteristic. So, I cannot optimize one variable over here I have to optimize all 4 variables over here and determine which is the setting that will give me this uh, optimal scenarios like that for all 4 uh, CDQs like that ok. So, that is the scenario what happens is that uh, technology uh, the uh, the problem is known as multiple response optimization problem. How it can be solved? There, there are many ways of solution of this. So, we will talk about one method that is known as desirability function approach which is available in uh, Minitab interface like that. It is available in Minitab interface like that. So, the problem is uh, basically we can think of a non-linear programming optimization problem like that. So, we have to maximize one variable let us say this is one way of optimization over here where one of the variables can be considered as to be maximized which is the priority variable. Uh, so, primary object can be selected as maximize y1 and then we can put constraints to the other other uh, other other res, uh, response function over here. So, that is other uh, other CTQs over here. So, this should be subjected to this y2 should be within this and this and y3 should be within this and this and if I can solve this problem may be one of the feasible solution we can get uh, and uh, uh, that may be suitable for implementation like that. So, this is mathematical programming and we can use some of the algorithms like direct search for is used uh, most of the time uh, many uh, many of the scenarios you can use evolutionary algorithms also. So, there are many ways of doing this mathematical programming we can we can do that ok. So, this is one way and another Another way what we have is that we, we can also use uh, uh, one uh, desirability function approach one one which is known as desirability function approach. So, so, so to apply uh, desirability function approach uh, what is required is that I need to understand what is to be maximized, what is to be minimized or something like that. So, this is one of the experimentation like last time what we have seen is that yield and reaction time and reaction temperature that that experiment we have done and CCD design was used over here. Now, uh, instead of one uh, response that is over here, we have three response over here which is to be optimized over here. Earlier case we, we can we can determine the uh, uh, response surface and then we can find out the optimal condition. Now, uh, we have three general desirability function approach is used when, when we have more than one response scenario. So, in this case I have three response scenarios like that. So, in this case uh, problem becomes difficult because uh, trade off solutions is required over here and there may be interrelationship between this y is the y characteristic that you are seeing over here. So, this uh, yield uh, and this are interrelated they are correlated like that and in that case uh, we have to find out the setting for x 1 and x 2 which will optimize all the variables and it is not easy it is difficult like that a difficult problem which is known as multiple response optimization problem. So, CCD design was used and we have the response over here now we want to maximize all together maximize yield we want to uh, keep the viscosity at a certain level on targets like that and uh, we may want to minimize the molecular weight that is y3. So, one is maximization one is on target one is minimization problem that we are trying to tackle over here ok. And this problem is taken from Montgomery's book that is uh, design and analysis of experiments over here you can get all the data information see uh, whatever data I am using I am referring the book. So, you can you can just refer the books and see that chapter and you will find the data. So, if you go to the Montgomery's book like applied uh, 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 apply probability and statistics for engineers or it is statistical quality control or it is design analysis or experiments. So, uh, this is uh, you you can see in any of the any of the books and you can just uh, enter the data and then uh, you can follow the procedure what is shown in the video and you will get all the results that we have discussed like that. So, this problem is maximization of yield on target is the uh, viscosity and minimization of this. So, here uh, the information that is given in Montgomery's book is that uh, y 1 uh, should be within 70 and 80 over here target value is 80 it has to be maximized. So, uh, this is I have to reach this value over here. Then second one is uh, y 2 should be on target. So, target is 65. So, uh, the upper range 
range and lower range is given as 62 and 68 over here ok. And the operating uh, re reaction temperature over here these are the x variables. So, it varies from minus uh, 1.414 uh, to plus 1 over here. So, in this case uh, plus 1.414 that is the uh, uh, positive side we are seeing here. and uh, this is similar to x 2 also minus 1.414 to uh, plus 1.414 like that ok. And the third one is to be minimized. So, in this case target value it should be less than 3400. Uh, and the target value is defined as uh, 3200. Let us if we can reach this one that is ok for us. So, this is the problem statement that we are having on hand and uh, this data can be you can create the CCD design and then enter the data that is given yield, viscosity and molecular weights like that we can we can create that and how to analyze that in Minitab that is important. And for this we may, Minitab uses a desirability function approach, Minitab uses a desirability function approach over here. Uh, so, what it will do is that the response that you are getting over here. So, these values will be converted, these values that you are getting over here uh, will be converted into a desirability values like that. This all these values that you are seeing over here will be converted into a value desirability which lies between 0 to 1, which will lie between 0 to 1 uh, and uh, it will depend on what type of uh, uh, whether we want to maximize. So, if we want to maximize a variable and there is a desirability function for that maximization any types of uh, y characteristics which is to be maximized. So, uh, these uh, functions will be used. There are alternative desirability functions that that is available for uh, if it is uh, smaller the beta type of function I can I can calculate the value of dj which lies between 0 and 1 which will lie between 0 and 1 over here. So, if you tell me the uh, values of yj uh, which is the actual value I can convert into a value between 0 to 0 and 1 and uh, for a specific types of characteristics if smaller the better type of characteristics we want. Uh, so, in this case this is the function that is given. So, this is a function that is given by uh, Derringer and Swiss. So, in this case what what is required this is simplified one ok Harrington first proposed this one. So, we have we, this is desirability function approach you can see in any research papers you will find this one this one and Minitab uses this one. So, it will it will convert this uh, variable uh, this response variable into 0 and 1 uh, variables over here. So, this will be converted. Similarly, for nominal the best or on target values uh, dj values can be calculated like that this will also vary between 0 and 1 like that and uh, uh, similarly larger the better also we can we can get the value of uh, desirability which will lie between 0 and 1 like that. So, uh, so you, you can think of that uh, uh, nominal the best if, if I want to explain this one nominal the best over here. So, in this case if the value if, if the value of y falls outside the specification which is defined like uh, uh, the, that there is definition over here. So, this is defined as uh, y 2 should be between 62 and 68. So, if the value is below 62 if the value is below 62 uh, then in that case if this is below 62 this is the minimum value let us say this is 62 over here then desirability value will be equals to 0. If the value is uh, uh, greater than uh, this one. So, in this case the value will be also equals to 0. So, if you are outside the specification the desirability value will be 0 like this. This is the target value over here. This is the upper specification. This is the lower specification limit. So, if you do not hit the target uh, if you do not hit the target and move away like this up to a certain point there will be some desirability dj value. But if you are outside the specification the dj value will be equals to 0. But if you are hitting the target exactly the dj value will be equals to 1. So, 1 is desirable in any any case. So, 1 will be desirable. So, uh, we want to uh, maximize the value of dj and the maximum value is given as 1 like that. So, similarly over here the using this function when you put this one. So, smaller the better if it is near to 0 if it is smaller the better when let us say the target value is 0. So, when you reach 0 the desirability value will be equals to 1. Similarly, when we are using this uh, larger the better type of function. So, if it has to be more than certain values if, if it is more than certain values what will happen is that desirability will be converted as 1 well we will be considered as 1 over here. So, this is the uh, function that is given uh, which converts the response into the uh, relative measures uh, for and, and there are three types of functions over here. One is for larger the better, one is for nominal the best and one is for uh, lower the better or smaller the better like that. So, these functions will be used by Minitab and that will convert the value. So, when I am searching uh, for a optimal scenario of x 1 and x 2 it will convert uh, for that what is the predicted value of y 
and for that predicted value of y, it will calculate what is the desirability value and all the desirability value for y1, y2 and y3 for that setting condition will be calculated. And then using this d1, d2 and d3 value, it will calculate a composite desirability value which is given over here which is known as composite desirability and it is taken as geometric mean. If there are 3 variables, this will be 3 square root of uh, d1 values that you have got for a given setting d2 value that you have gone for a given setting and d3 value that you have gone. So, cube root of this will be used over here. So, 1 by r this is the formulation over here 1 by r over here that is that is known as composite desirability and composite desirability will also lie between 0 and 1. So, if it is near to 1 that means you are reaching the trade off condition which is the best one. So, if you hit 1 that means all the target values are completed like that you have reached all the target values like that ok. If this is equals to 1 this is equals to 1 that is and, and the third one is equals to 1 that is the most favorable scenario, but this does not happen in real life because their their intercorrelation and getting the global optimal solution is not easy. Uh, you need to have a trade-off solution like that. You can be near to one, but getting exactly one is rarest of rare occasions that you will find. Okay, so I have to get the setting of x1, x2, and x3. Uh, that will optimize y1, y2 and y3 and y1, y2 will be having a desirability value d1, d2 and d3 and multiplication of this if it is equals to 1 and cube root of 1 is means 1. So, if this is the ideal scenario, but you will never reach this ideal scenario, you will get some values that is uh, desirability capital D that that will be equals to that will lie within 0 and 1 like that. So, maybe 0.9. Uh, 3 may be the values uh, of uh, composite desirability that we will get when the solution is achieved in, uh, by Minitab. So, Minitab will give you what is the composite desirability value that Minitab has reached and what is the setting condition of x1, x2, x3 that we did mention. So, we have done x1 and x2 it can it can take more number of variables like that. So, that is not a constraint ok. So, we will discuss about implementation of this in our next session and then we will move forward with some other topics like that. So, this is an important topic. So, we will move from here uh, uh, so that uh, we can address other things like that. So, this is a uh, typical scenario in most manufacturing organization and there are different ways to solve this multiple response optimization problem. One of the methods I am showing which is which is uh, in mini tab how it is done like that I will demonstrate that one, but you can see literature where there are many other approaches to solve uh, multiple response optimization problem basically ok. Uh, so, we will continue from here with examples on uh, multiple response optimization problem. Thank you for listening. Yeah.